I feel like praising him. Yeah. Talking about the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> uh, sometimes you don't feel like it. But you still got to do it anyway. Sometimes you don't feel like it, but you got to do it anyway. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I have never praised God and in the end said that was a waste of time. Never, never, it's never happened. Never happened. Glory to God. It's always good to bless the Lord at all times. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Glory to his holy name. Glory to his holy name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Good morning to everybody on this beautiful Saturday. Good morning to you. Thank you for coming on and being part of this um, Saturday morning time of mutual encouragement. Mutual assured encouragement. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, come on in, folks. Glory to his name. To his name, his wonderful name. Glory to God. Glory. As you're coming in, hit that share button for us this morning and encourage other folks to come on down. Encourage other people to tap on in to what's going on today. Glory to God. Buenos dias. Our was goodbye, right? So, um, I'm not sure that, how to say good morning in French. <laughs> but if somebody could help me with that, that'd be great. Um, Periscope, we may have a little challenge here. Let's try this again. Uh, for Periscope, it seems to be a little temperamental on Saturday. It's not. All right, let's try that again. Come on in. Praise his name, everybody. Praise his name. Glory to God. Glory to his name. His wonderful name. Lord, thank you for hitting your share button, your like button, and um, inviting your friends and family button. Glory. This morning, why don't you type in where you are uh, watching from this morning? City, state. If you're outside the U.S., give us your country as well. That'd be great. Why don't you do that for us this morning? Love to know where you're coming in from. Praise the name of Jesus. Bless his name. Glory to God. This morning, we're going to talk about what to do, what we should do now. What we should do now. Bonjour. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's good morning. Thank you. A good day, right? Thank you. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Come on in, folks. What we should do. We got North Carolina in the house, Macon, Georgia, Rhode Island. New York is here. New York is here in the house this morning. Willingboro, New Jersey. Charmaine, I don't know you from New Jersey. Mansfield, North Providence, glory to God. Granger, Indiana, is that is that right, Paula? Orlando, Florida, thank you. Adelphi, Maryland, Lincoln, Rhode Island, working <laughs> in Rhode Island. Cartier, you had work, is that what you're telling me? Hey, Marlene, tell us where you're from. I think, Marlene, you are in New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, South Ozone Park, New York. Okay. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. This morning, we're going to spend just some time um, musing about what we should do now. And um, that is particularly of interest for two reasons. One, in light of Good Friday or the actual crucifixion of Jesus, which was earlier in that week, to um, Resurrection Sunday, when Jesus rose from the dead, there is a gap. And we want to talk about that. What do we do in the gap? What do we do between 
the difficulty and the and the and the answer manifesting in our lives. We want to cover that this morning. Glory to God. So as you're coming in, just kind of type in, tell me where you're coming in from, Marlene. I did not know you were in Anglewood. That's, I grew up in Anglewood. I think you know that. Uh, good to have everybody on. So let's pray this morning and um, acknowledge the greatness of God. Jesus, we adore you this morning and worship you. We say thank you. We honor you. We recognize you. You are the bread that we need. You are the water that we need. You are the air that we breathe. And as we look into your word today and gather together, it is our desire, hope, and belief that you are in the midst of us. So please speak to us. Um, if you choose to speak through us, but more importantly, manifest yourself to us today. We ask this in, in your name. Amen. Glory to God. Come on in, folks. So what do we do now? That gap, that gap between when prayers are offered, when news is received when a difficulty occurs that gap between that and the answer the manifestation the resolution that gap is 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 the zone right somebody type in the zone type in the zone that's the zone that's the zone where where battles are actually um, won or lost, it's in that gap. Make no mistake about it, it's in that gap. Right? It's in that gap, Wendy. It's right there, right in that gap that 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 decisions are made, things are done or not done as the case may be. That's the gap. That's the gap where where one's faith can plummet. That's the gap when um, other things can be piled on. That's the gap. That's the gap when some really difficult things happen. May I tell you a story? Um, you know, you go through various things in, in, in life, or you can go through various things in life. And um, I had a dream, and in this dream I was running, and then I tripped, and I fell into a ditch. I fell into a ditch. And I'm in this ditch, and then, um, while I'm in the ditch, it was like there's like a shield over my face, but then I could see more dirt coming on me, coming on me, coming on me. This was many, many, many years ago. And, and out of that came various revelations to me. But one revelation is that um, when you get knocked down, if you don't get up, more dirt comes on top of you. Has anybody ever experienced that before? You know, if you don't get up, more stuff comes on top of you. It's like swimming and having an open sore. Um, you're going to attract more more danger. More sharks are going to come your way if you're swimming in open open with an open wound. And so, there there how you handle the challenge, how you handle the crisis, determines often how long the crisis will last. Many times, but also um, 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 what else could happen in that crisis? That makes sense? And so when we look at the example of Jesus and his disciples, the crucifixion was the event. Um, no one escaped the horror of that moment in time. If you were in the known world at that time, if you were in Jerusalem, it swelled to three or four times its normal size because of the Passover. Jews came from all over the world to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. So when the crucifixion happened, everybody knew what was up, right? But, but, and I do have a, um, a, 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 an, an expert on the line right now um, who has traveled, I think, 17 times to um, Jerusalem. Uh, Luan Pazulo, if that's correct, help me out with the number. If you can type that in, how many times you've been to Jerusalem. And we still have to go on a trip, so <laughs> we will do that. 
um, the, the, the city sw swelled to unbelievable numbers. So everybody knew what was going on, but here's the point. Once the crucifixion happened, um, they were confronted with unbelievable um, um, anxiety. Unbelievable anxiety. And during that time, people scattered. They went to their own places. They hid. The disciples ran. Let me tell you something. They ran and hid <laughs> behind locked doors. And so, so, so what, what a person does in that gap is absolutely critical. So before we talk about what we should do, perhaps, in the gap, let's talk about Three things that we should not do in the gap. Are you ready? Come on, somebody type in, don't do this. Type in, don't do this. You ready? Don't do this. Number, number one, in the, in the pain of situations, do not hide. Do not hide. Are you hearing me? Do not hide. Come on, somebody type that in for me. Thank you. Just type it in, type it in. Do not hide. Don't do this. When you are in the middle of it, do not hide. And this is a tendency. I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for a lot of experience I've had with individuals, including yours truly, that in pain, we hide. In challenge, we hide, right? We retreat. We cover up somewhere, right? Do not hide. Do not hide from those who can help you, those who can correct you, those who will challenge you. Those who will pray with you, do not hide. Are you hearing me? Come on, tell somebody, do not hide, right? Right? I want you, matter of fact, I want, I want to provoke somebody today. Why don't you type in somebody you're going to tell right now, do not hide. So in other words, Patty, you could type in OJ, do not hide. I want you to type that in. Type that in. Provoke somebody today. Do not hide. Do not hide. The disciples hid. They were scared in their, and really in, full of unbelief, I might add. It wasn't that they were just hiding from persecutors. They were, and prosecutors, they were, they were hiding. People hide. They don't want to let people know what they're going through. They don't want to expose themselves. They don't want to let people know that they're not winning today, right? We're not winning today. Now, you can't tell everybody everything, nor should you, right? Right? Come on. Amen, Nicole. Right? Type that in. Type that in. Do not hide. Do not hide. Mahalia, do not hide. Hey, Brother Mark. So, 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 so we hide many times, you know, we can't let people know. But you can't tell everybody everything. But you can't hide from everything and everybody. There are times when you're not winning. Are you hearing me? Doesn't mean you're going to lose the game, but you're just not winning at that point in time, right? You're in the in-between stage. You don't look your best. Don't feel your best, right? You don't have it all together that you need to. And when we hide, we then fake the funk and it doesn't work. Faking the funk is different than having faith, y'all. You hear me? Faking the funk is different than having the face, faith. And so we cannot hide. Amen? Do not hide. Like before we get to the things we ought to do in the gap, this is the first thing. Just, you can't hide, man. You can't hide. Right? The second thing, Brother Norm, I would offer to you today is um, don't hang with unbelievers. Now, before you get mad at me, let me help you out with what I mean by unbelievers. There are people who call on the name of Jesus who are unbelievers. I call them um, 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 unbelieving believers. Unbelieving believers. In other words, they believe in Jesus, but in the midst of your challenge and your difficulty, they, they are unbelievers. They don't believe you're getting out of this jam either. They don't believe you're coming out of this, you know? So, so you can't hang with them, Right? You can't go back to them and say, oh, yeah, man, it didn't work out. You know, they're going to sit there and say, yeah, let's drink to that. I knew it wasn't going to work out. I told you. You can't, you can't, listen, listen, you can't go back to that, right? You know, there's a guy in the Bible, Rosa, there's a guy in the Bible. Remember this guy called Job, J-O-B, 
We can call him Job if you like to, right? Remember Job? The Bible speaks of three friends that Job had. And these friends, they meant well, but they were deceived. Not all people, right? Not all, not all people who, who, who are your friends, despite meaning well, are going to be good for you in a, in a particular season. Hope this is helpful to somebody. Not everybody's going to be helpful to you in a particular season of your life. And Job's going through hellacious situations. And Job's friends, Wendy, Job's friends had the unmitigated gall to speak improperly and incorrectly about God. Their, his friends kind of started theorizing and coming up with their own ideas as to why Job's going through what Job's going through. And it ticked God off. God said, listen, I'm about to beat all of you down. Check it out. It's in, it's in Job chapter 41 and chapter 42. I'm going to beat all of you guys down because you're not speaking right about me. So during the gap, during that in the, in, in the um, individual time, OJ, you, you, you got you to gotta make sure you're around the right people. You can't hang with unbelievers, right? You need to be around people. And again, I mean no harm by this, but... But this is why I appreciate uh, one of my doctors, Dr. Glenn Prescott, um, and, and even, even another doctor who doesn't share the same faith that we do. Um, they can bring you the facts, but they don't discount God's power. Are you hearing me? So you've got to be around people who, who can tell it like it is, but also tell you what God's going to do, right? And still lock in with you. So it's critical that a person in the middle of a difficulty needs to be around the right people. Are you hearing me? Right? So we're going to get to the three things you ought to do in a crisis, but we got to handle the three things you don't want to do. Number one, you don't want to hide. Right? You don't want to hide. God knows you do not want to hide. And secondly, you can't, you can't hang with unbelievers. I'm talking about folk in the Lord's church who are still unbelievers. Not everybody can handle what you're going through and you're hurting yourself by running back to the same, the same crew um, and they don't, they don't have that faith, right? Right? You can't, you can't do that, right? Um, Brother Mark, I'm not sure where you're coming from on that, but I'm going I'm to jump in on that statement that you made, you know. What about Job's wife? Well, we don't know. You know, she lost her whole, her whole crew, so she could have been bitter, angry. She could have died. We don't know really her story, you know. But we do know she said, Joe, why don't you curse God and die? We do know she said that. You hear me? We do know she said that, you know. And, and there is no mention of her in chapter 42 of Job, um, in Job's comeback story. Not everybody's going to be with you on your comeback story. You hear me? So, so during a crisis, in the gap, in between crucifixion and resurrection, we cannot hide and we cannot hang with unbelievers. Amen. When you are bleeding out yourself, when you are up under it, when you're reaching for air, you got to be extremely selective as to who you let into your world and who, who you call and who is your, your prayer partner. Right? Are you hearing me? I'm just trying to help somebody. Right, right. As a as a swimmer, as 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 a person who's pulled many a person out of a pool from drowning, what I was trained to believe and understand is what's worse than one person drowning is two. So you got to go for what you know and be around people who are stronger than you or as strong as you in that situation. Are you hearing me? Right. In that situation, in that situation, you can't, you can't. Can I go just a little bit deeper? Can I go just a little, a little tad deeper? Now, 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 let's say, let's say, I don't want to call anybody's name because I don't want you to read it wrong. Let's say for a moment, I'm going to use my daughter's cat as an example, right? I'm going to say, let's say Blue went to the doctors, the vet, and the doctor said she got fleas. Now, I know that ain't happening, but she got fleas. If, if, if Blue is not careful, 
she is going to make her situation worse by getting around individuals who are not going to feed her faith. May I, may I help? May I, I hear? You must feed your faith. You must be around people who are going to feed your faith, not blow smoke at you, but feed your faith. Not people are going to say it's going to be okay. That's not faith, y'all. Saying it's going to be okay. That, that's not the talk of faith. That's the talk of wishing. I want people to say, you know what? This is a messed up situation. It is. You know what? But we're going to remember what God said to us in the light time, in the light, despite how dark it is right now. Again, you cannot forget, Melissa, you cannot forget what God said to you in the light when it's dark. Are you hearing me? You cannot forget in the dark times what God said to you in the light. You cannot. Thank you. Absolutely, Sister Luann. Iron sharpens iron. Right? You got to get around. You can't be around dull people, spiritually speaking. Isn't that right, Emilio? Um, Beauty and Brittany on Periscope, right? You, you cannot. I, I know I'm laying on this heavy, but you, you're going you're gonna to get wrecked in a time of crisis because you don't have the right people around you, right? I, and I'm sorry, it can be very painful, but certain people, listen, this social distancing thing is, is, it could be your best friend right now. Because there's certain people you don't need in your space. Come on, come on. Somebody type that in. I don't need that in my space. Right? I need to take a, I need to take a sip of my tea for that one. You need people feeding your faith. You don't need people in your space that's not going to feed your faith. You just don't. I'd rather be by myself. I'd rather be by myself, Billy. I would rather be by myself then have somebody not feeding my, I need you to feed my faith or shut up. Pastor Tony, can I say that? I need to check with the, the local apostle. Pastor Tony, can, can I say shut up on, on Facebook, Periscope? I would rather have you shut up than to, than to open your mouth because you don't know what else to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? right? Sometimes you don't know what to say as a friend. Just be quiet. Just be there. Right? Sometimes just be there. You don't know what to say. Just be there. I don't need that in my space, man. You in my personal space right now. We need to social distance ourselves. We need to spiritually distance ourselves right now because I don't need I don't need what you got to infect me. You hear me? I don't need what you got because my spiritual immune system might be low right now as it is. And then here you come dropping this on me saying, well, you know, every cat I know had fleas. You know, nobody's got time for that, right? I need somebody, Apostle, I need somebody saying, wait a minute, Jesus is alive, man. And, and after crucifixion, there's always a resurrection, bless his name. There's going to be a resurrection. You need somebody to say there's going to be a resurrection. That somebody, Sunday is coming. It is coming down that road. It's going to turn. It's coming. You got to hang in there. That's what you got to tell somebody, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, we all going to die today. The devil is a liar. You know, come on, y'all. Stop the madness. Seriously. Come on. Let's, I mean, this is for real, for real. Right? And after the crucifixion, the disciples retreated. They all hung out behind locked doors. Behind locked doors. You hear me? These are the guys that walked with Jesus, saw him raise Lazarus from the dead, raise up Jairus, his daughter, stop the funeral procession, Heal the woman with the with the with the issue of blood for 12 years. The man who was born blind, he was 30 years old. God opened his eyes. The dude who was by the pool of Bethesda for 30.8 years. And then when the stuff really went down, they were locked behind locked doors. You gotta find somebody. You better get around somebody who can feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Are you hearing me? I'm just telling you, you know. You got to be around people to feed that thing. Now, listen, again, I'm, I want to help you with this. And I'm, I'm helping myself as I say this. By the way, Debbie, thank you for your, for your gift. We got that in the mail. I wanted to make sure I acknowledge that. Thank you for you, from you and Terry. All right? Um, again, you don't need individuals who are just going to tell you what you want to hear. But you do need people who can bring the strength of faith to your spirit in that moment in time, 
right? Glory to God. That's why I tell people, listen, somebody's getting ready to die. I'm, the, I'm not the right person to call. Don't call me. Don't call me because I'm going to try to talk him into living. You hear me? I'm going to try to talk him back from the dead. So, so stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You hear me? Glory to God. Some people, listen, listen, some people are not going to be in your future. I'm not saying they're going to die. I, I, they're not, I'm not, they're not going to die. They're just not going to be in your future. Are you hearing me? All right. So number one, stop the hiding. Saints are amazing. You, I mean, amazing. You know, one of the great pains I've had in ministry over the years, apostle, has been finding out that certain people are sick and they never told somebody. Now, this don't, check this out. This don't make no sense. How are you going to say, listen, um, Pastor, I want you to know so-and-so is sick, but they didn't, they didn't want to mention it to anybody. What? Let me tell you my, my flesh response to that. Are you ready? My flesh response to that? Then that's fine. Then that, that's it. My wife will tell you. I got elders on the phone that will tell you right on this on this call right now. You don't ask for prayer. I ain't praying for you. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? I, I'm not going. You don't want it. I'm just. I'm not doing. Why? Because you're hiding. People are hiding. You get attacked by something. Don't hide. Don't hide. Get around somebody that can help you. Amen. Praise His name. I know I'm hitting this thing hard, but. A lot of hiding going on, and people hide because of pride. Somebody type in, it's a pride thing. Type it in, it's a pride thing. It's a pride thing. Come on, type it in, it's a pride thing. I, you know, you know, I, I'm a man of faith and power. I can't let people know I'm strong. You got to let somebody know. Do you know that God has so rigged this deal that there are certain things you will not get over, get past, or get healed from until you open your mouth? MJ, I'm, I'm, I'm telling the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. There are certain things you will not get healed from unless you open your mouth. The Bible says unless you confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Am I not right? Elder James tells us that. It's a pride thing. Open your mouth. You're losing your house because you didn't open your mouth. They're taking your car because you didn't open your mouth. Right? You in, you in the ninth stage of that illness because you didn't open your mouth. Come on, right? I've been there. I know what that's like, right? Sometimes you got to tell somebody, you know? You got really jammed up in that sin because you didn't open your mouth. You should have told somebody, you know what? I'm really struggling with this thing. You know what I mean? It seems to be, it seems to be winning and gaining on me. You know, brother, pray for me. You should open your mouth. Bless his name. Bless his name. It's a pride thing. And pride, you know, goes before the fall. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You need grace in this season. Come on, amen. You need grace in this season. And there is amazing grace available, Glenda. There's amazing grace available, but it's available to the humble or to the humble, right? To the humble. It's not, it's not available to the prideful. You got, listen, God's resisting you. You in a world of hurt. Come on, amen. Right? We're trying. We, I Listen, I'm trying to, Reverend Shirley, I'm trying to get to the point where we talk about the three things you must do in this, in the in-between. But we, we, we hung up on this. So number one, hide. Number two, hang. The third thing is, this is the big one, Esther. This is the big one. This is the, this, this is the big one. This is the big one, Naomi. The third thing is, you can't go back to the old ways. You can't go back to the old ways. You cannot go back to the old ways. You just can't, right? In, in certain sectors of, of, of society and recovery, it's a relapse. You can't relapse. Spiritually speaking, you can't backslide. You can't go back to the, you just can't go back to the old ways. You can't, right? Not only can you not do it? It won't work even if you did do it. It's not going to taste the same. It's not going to smell the same. It's not going to feel the same. 
It's not going to do for you what it used to do for you. You can't go back. Come on, somebody type in. I can't go back. I can't go back. I don't know what I'm going to do going forward, but I know one thing. I can't go back. I can't go back to that. I can't go back to drinking that, sleeping that, smoking that, cussing that. Right? I can't, I can't, I can't go back to that. I can't go back to the old ways. I, I can't go back. I can't go back. Come on, everybody typed in and I can't go back. I can't, I can't, can't go back. I don't know what I'm going to do. If, if, it, if anything, I'm going to fail forward. I ain't going to fail backwards. I'm going to fail forward. I'm not going to fail backwards. One of my mentors, and I say mentors in quotation marks because it's on YouTube, but one of my mentors says it's better to fail forward than to fail backwards. At least if you fail forward, you know what you're going to hit when you fall. Bless his name. I am not going back. I cannot go back. I feel this in my spirit strong, man. There's something just way, just roll right over my spirit. I'm telling you right now, you cannot go back. We are not going back. You can't go back to business as usual. You can't go back to that old wine skin. You can't go back to that old way of thinking. You can't go back to that old way of praying. You can't go back to that, 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 that tired spiritual life that you have. You can't go back to your low living. You can't go back to that stinking thinking. You cannot go back. You may not know how we're going to go forward, but we cannot go back. Bless his name. You can't hide. You can't hang with the wrong people. And you can't go back. You hear me? Bless his name. Israel wanted to go back. They got, they got delivered miraculously. As everybody who's watching me right now and listening to me, you have been delivered miraculously in your lifetime. I know I got a witness. You have been delivered miraculously. You shouldn't be here right now. You never should have made it back from the military. You never should have made it back from that crack. You should never made it back from that abuse. You should never should made it. You should never made it back. But you're here. God delivered you, saved you. Here you are, with your tongue talking self. But Israel got delivered too, and then they went into a hard time. And this is what they said. You know what? You should have left us. You should have left us in Egypt. At least we had something to eat. The devil is a lie. I'd rather starve out here than go back to eat under in bondage. Bless his name. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to depression. I'm not going back to brokenness. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to stealing and robbing from God. I'm not. Come on, right? I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Right. They said, you should have left us out here, Moses. Why you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? You're not going to die in this wilderness, y'all. You got to keep it moving. Right, Priscilla? You got to keep it moving in this season. Number one, you can. Come on, that's right, Mark. I ain't going. Mark said, I'm not going back to cancer. Bless his name. God delivered you. He's not. You're not going back. Bless his name. Hallelujah. I, 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 you can't hide, y'all. You're hiding. God's sending people all the time to help you, but you're going back. You cannot go back. You can't hide. Secondly, you gotta, you can't hang with unbelievers in this season. I'm not talking, listen, I'm not talking about worldly folk. I'm, I'm, I'm really not. Can I lean on that just a little bit? I'm not talking about the heathen and the, and the pagan out there. I'm not talking about that. Because sometimes they give you a little bit more faith than the, than the folk around you. I'm just telling the truth like it is, to be quite honest. You hear me? And um, I'm talking about people who should be believers but aren't. Right? And you can't go back. Now, what should we do, Patty? What should we do in, in the gap? In, in the gap, in between the crucifixion, resurrection, what should we do? What should we do? You ready? Number one, got to remember, call to mind, remember. You have to remember what God said. Are you hearing me? Have to remember what God said. 
Bless his name. That's why, that's why, that's why. What are we doing? We're taking the blood, the blood, the body and the blood of Christ. Why? Because we're remembering. But that's, that's a little deeper. That's another one. But right now, it's got to call to mind what God says, what God said. One fighter said, one prize fighter said, everybody's got a plan to get punched in the face. Right? Dr. Glenn Wright, we've got to remember what God said, man. Here's a secret, though. Don't tell anybody I told you this. Don't tell anybody. But you can't recall what God said if you haven't heard what God said. So you got to call to mind. What did God say? Now, 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 can I, can I, we're going to go deeper. Somebody say go deeper. Somebody say go, go deeper. Got to go deeper. Now, I don't want to throw anybody off, but we got to go deeper. All right. So you got to, you got to trade in your scuba gear, your, your, your little snorkel. You got to get you two tanks to go deeper on this. Right. Here we go. Come on, y'all. Here we go. Right. You got to remember what God said. But number two, you have to know what God is saying. What is God saying? What is God saying? Bless his name. What is God saying? Because the book that you and I, the word of God that you and I have, the Bible, is what God said. But for your specific situation that you're dealing with and experiencing right now, God is saying certain things based upon what he's already said. Are you hearing me? Some would call that a rhema word. But please understand, what is God saying? Exactly, exactly. We got to decipher. Thank you, Doc. We got to decipher what God is saying in this season right now, right? We have to decipher that. And, and, and this is where many times we fail, Maria. I'm just to, just, to be, just to be straight up. We fail because we just go back to, we're going to read the Bible. We're going to read the Bible. I got you. I got you on reading the Bible, right? And so we do our devotionals and then we, then we quote what God said, and don't confess what God is saying. I, I know this is. I, 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 I'm not trying to be deep, just to be deep. I'm just. I'm just letting you know that it's that it's more than you just kind of opening the Bible and just reading the thing, right? To listen to quote scripture because this is what we do, Charmaine. This is what we do as Christians. We, we're famous for quoting scriptures. To quote scripture is simply to recall based upon knowledge, right? I'm going to quote, by his stripes, I am healed, right? But to confess the scripture is different. Both involve knowledge, but one involves something alive in that moment in time. So to confess means to agree with God, right? Homologio, same. Homo, same. Logio, logos, word. It's to agree with the same word. So, so, so we know what God said, but what is God saying now to me? What is my father saying to me? You're not going to get that just because you're a good guy. You're going to get that as you spend time with the father. So dad, what, you know, what, what, you know, you know, what's our move on this one? I can hear King David in a jam, um, um, saying, what should we do? He said, listen, I want you to go up at once. Same chapter. Has him again. What should we do this time? Wait till you hear the rustling in the, in the mulberry trees. Then you go. So, so that's the difference. See, had I gone on yesterday's word, I would have been out of line and I would have missed what God is saying today. Are you following me? That makes sense? So we have to know what God said. Now we know have to know what God is saying. 
Right? This is what we're doing in the gap, y'all. This is what we're doing in the gap. So we remember what he said. Now we recall what he's saying. Right? Now, now, now here's the next one now. Y'all ready? Here's the next one. I just, I just, I just, I just hope you, I just hope you're ready. I don't want to, again, I don't, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got my MDs on the call. I got the prophet who's watching right now. I got Apostle Tony watching. So they, they're going to cover me when I say this. All right, you ready? In the gap, you and I need to be all about repentance. All about it. All about it. You hear me? All about it. All about it. Now, repentance is a two-sided coin. It has two sides, but it's the same thing. One side is you got to shift the way you think. So in the gap, you and I got to learn to think differently. Are you hearing me? We've got to get new thoughts on God. We've got to understand Jesus differently. We've got to study differently. We've got to shift the way we think about things. We can't go into this next season with the same mindset. You can't put new wine in old wineskins. You got to shift the way you think. That's what that word means. Metanoia, repent means to shift your mind. Change your mind. Right? That's one side of that coin. The other side of the coin is that you now got to change behavior. In this gap, we've got to say, you know what? I'm going, I am going to, I got a different mindset on this thing now. I'm, I'm doing this thing differently. I'm not playing with this thing, right? That's got to be it. And if you do not, if you do not do that in this season, you are going to relapse. I'm telling you, you are going to relapse, recoil, return to the vomit. You're going back to old, stale stuff, right? You're going back to old wineskins, old, old relationships, old mindsets. You're going right back to the same craziness that got you jammed up in the first place. Are you following me, right? It requires a repentance. Now, 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 truth be told... And I'm going to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. That when Jesus came on the scene, his first message was repent. You got to hear that. When his cousin came on the scene, John the Baptist, his first message was what? Repent. His message wasn't stop, come out the club, stop drinking, stop. His message wasn't go to church. His message, his message was got to get your head straight. Your, your mind's all messed up, <laughs> right? Right? All messed up. So repentance is a two-sided coin. One is shift the way you think. The other is now modify or change your behavior. Watch this. Change your behavior based upon your new way of thinking. And when people change their behavior without changing the way they're thinking, their behavior will return to their old way of thinking. Case in point, a bit, a bit, a bit um, um, a, a, a extravagant, if you will, but nevertheless true. You find someone who's been locked away two years, three years, five years, ten years in prison, and they're released. Now, while in prison, they were not around some of their old friends that were still in the hood, still in the neighborhood, still in the corporate environment, wherever they were. They were um, 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 supposedly and allegedly away from um, the drug trade, if that was their thing. They're away from um, smoking cigarettes, etc. Right now, when they come out, though their behavior was modified, their mind never changed. So you are always going to go back to the the strength, the condition of your mind. Are you following me? Right. So in this gap time, you and I must emphasize for ourselves, how am I thinking? Get surgical with this thing, right? Take every area of your life and say, God, show me. Show me financially, God. I mean, show me what's wrong with my thinking here, 
right? I'm doing all the right activities, but my mind's not right. God, show me about that, right? God, when it comes to health and 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 deliverance, and God, show me about that. God, what about this thing? What about what's my concept when it comes to marriage and relationships? And right, this is a time when in the gap you spend time doing that. You ain't got time to worry about it. You'd be like, I gotta get this thing straight. Gotta get my mind right. Right? Gotta get my mind right. But if you don't do that, if you do not do that, you will go back. No question, no doubt about it. You are going back. It's just a matter of time. But if you change your mind, how many of you, how many of you that are watching, listening, have ever found yourself saying to yourself, because your mind got changed, how could I have ever done this, done that, been there, been with that person, right? If you've ever come to that realization in your own life, type in me. Type in me too. Type in me too. If, that, if you've ever been to that place when you realize, what was I thinking? Right? You, right? It's like, oh my God, why is that? It wasn't because of the pain you suffered. It was because you had a revelation. It's like, oh my God. That's because repentance happened. We take that word repentance and we put religious symbols around it, but it's not even a religious word, y'all. It, 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 it comes from a Greek word that was used, but it's not, it's not Jesus didn't invent the word repentance, right? Come on, stay with me. So, so, so as I've stated before, you change your mind one truth at a time. In other words, one metanoia, one shift, one repentant moment at a time. I'm going to change the way I think about that. Right? And then you go to work on that. You get information. You get revelation. You get download into that area, and it exposes it. It blows it up. Right? It's like, oh, my God, how could I have? Right? I don't want to get too personal in your life right now, but, but, but. Has anybody done anything ever that you are ashamed of? When you look back at it now, you're like, I'm ashamed of that. How could I have ever, right? Why? Because you shifted. You shifted. You shifted. This is why, this is why you need the apostolic and prophetic in your life. Can we go a little bit deeper? I know, I know we're, we're about 20 leagues, 20,000 leagues under the sea right now, but we got to go just a little bit deeper. This is why, family, you and I need to be around apostolic and prophetic mindset people, people who can speak that way. Because you know that scripture where it says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not fleshly, um, but they are divinely empowering to a pull down strongholds and cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every what thought into captivity. You know that scripture? Somebody find that for me. That the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. That, that, that more literally means this. It means an apostolic death depth charge. In other words, it's like an M80. Some of you know what that is. It's a quarter stick of dynamite. Back in the day, it was a quarter stick of dynamite. We played with bombs, basically. It's like inserting a, 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 an apostolic word, an apostolic word into your mindset will shift you. It'll shift you. All of a sudden, your eyes open like, yo, what's really going on, right? Right? An apostolic mind set. That's why you, that's why, that's why just feeding off of, off of, you know, a little bit of Christian this and a little bit of Christian that, you ain't eating nothing, right? But if you're going to handle the gap, you got to change the way you think. That's why you got to be around apostolic prophetic people, not just good preaching, are you hearing me? Good entertainment value preaching. You need, you need.
need a word, a rhema from God that will shift your mind. That blows up stuff. Bam. All of a sudden. There are some people watching, listening right now, and you are so down on yourself and your self-esteem is in the toilet and you have no real value for yourself. You don't think you can ever come back to anything, become anything, do anything. You know what that is? It's because you've got a wrong mindset. You've got to repent. you got to shift your mind and you need an apostolic word in order to drop in there. Otherwise, you're going to just be, and I say this with quotation marks because I don't want to offend anybody when I say that. It is going to be crazy. You follow me, it's going to be, you're going to be emotionally all over the place all the time, up and down, never really getting anything done, always the one that got a need, always one that got a problem, always got all, all, always the one crying. Are you following me? Why? Because you have to shift the way you think. Can we go just a little bit deeper? Right? So number one, we got to remember what God said. We got to recall what God is saying now. And then we have to repent. So based upon what God said, based upon what God is saying, how do I conform myself to that? Are you following me? Let's go just a little bit further. Now, in Romans chapter 12, remember that, Sandra? Romans chapter 12. We know the scripture, right? It says, be not conformed to this world, but be what transformed 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 by what by the renewing of your mind the renewing of your mind i'm telling you folks i i know i know i know this is this 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 may not be real deep to some this may not be you know super sensational you you change your life by changing your mind, man. Trans, you transform your life by renewing your mind. That That's why you got up this morning. I believe for that thought, that right there. You transform. You want to transform your life? Change your mind. Transform your mind. Renew your mind. Right? It so requires repentance in this gap. Last thing. Last thing. You ready? Last thing. We're remembering. We're recalling. We're repenting. Now here we go. You ready? We're rehearsing. We rehearse this. This is, this is, this is why, this is, I can, I can only speak for me when I say this. I can speak for my wife on this topic, because I see her do this, but I want to speak, for, I'm going to speak for me. This is why I start my day this way every day, whether I'm live or not. What am I doing? I'm rehearsing. I'm rehearsing what God said. I'm rehearsing what God is saying. I'm remembering. Are you following me? I'm rehearsing this thing. Rehearsing, even as it's spelled, is rehearing. So when you're rehearsing something, you're rehearing it over and over again. Because what am I doing? The more and more I do that, Jermaine, the well, more and more I do that, guess what happens? My, I start to transform. I start to think differently. Right? I mean, I mean, truth be told, right? I mean, I came to Christ in 1981, ministry 1984. This very month, next week, will actually be my 36th uh, ministry anniversary this year. Right? Stay with me. And I've giving, tithing, all of that has been in my flow for 36 years, at least, at least, really before that. But check it out. Until I rehearsed it, I didn't get transformed in my thinking about it. 
So I would do it out of obligation. I would do it out of um, um, requirements. I would do it with an understanding that there's a blessing attached to them. But when I caught a revelation of it, it was over. Crisis come up, I sow. You hear me? No crisis come up, I'm sowing. Why? Because if I got seed in the ground, I know I got my need met. You follow me? So, so I like that. I like that. Let me bring that back up. Um, my good friend Luan Pazulo there. Right? Um, do you follow me? So it's a rehearsing, a rehearing of it over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again, over and over again. And I rehearse it, not just rehearing it in one sense. I rehear it, I rehear myself saying it. That's important to get, folks. Right? Important to get. Almost done. If you got if you got five more minutes, we're gonna be good. Right? Rehearing it. So now the Bible says. In Romans chapter 10, I think verse 17, faith comes by what? Faith comes by what? Somebody, somebody, somebody finish that for me. Faith comes by what? Faith comes by what? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing, hearing what? Right? Hearing what? Hearing what? The word of God. But if you break that scripture down, faith does not come by just hearing the word of God. The word there for word, Christine, right? The word for word there is not logos, where we'd find that in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the logos. The word used there in Romans 10, 17 is the word rhema. So faith comes as we hear the spoken word of God. Are you hearing me? The spoken word of God. And if you want to go a little deeper with that, it's the word of God that you speak, right? So when I speak the word of God, the rhema word of God, Faith comes to me. As word come out of my mouth, faith comes to me. Faith gets built in me. Strength comes to me. That's why rehearsing is so important. Because when I rehear it and I re-speak it, guess what happens? Faith comes to me. It keeps coming to me. It keeps coming to me. It keeps coming to me. And so when someone says, man, you got a lot of faith, it's not that I got a lot of faith. It's that my faith is being developed because I keep hearing the word of God spoken out of my mouth. I must speak what God says. Is this all right? Now, again, my good friend Luan Pizzullo. <laughs> I'm using, I'm utilizing her today, right? So, so she said, rehearse until a revelation comes. Now that is powerful. You hear me? That is powerful. That is powerful, right? You keep rehearsing out of your mouth, keep speaking out of your mouth, coming in your ear and out of your mouth. Faith keeps coming. Then all of a sudden, a revelation breaks. A revelation will trump knowledge all day long. Are you following me? Because once I have a revelation, according to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 20, the secret things belong to the Lord, but that which is revealed to us belong to us and to our children forever. So once a revelation hits me, it's too late to talk me out of it now. I got it. It is, it is germinated. It has opened. It has sprung forth. It's too late. The flower is blooming. It is go it's too late to tell me it ain't going to happen because it already done happened. Once a revelation hits, it's a wrap. A lot of believers, many of us, and, and I'm, I'm in that, I was in that category in a lot of areas. I'm still in that category in some areas of just knowledge, and I need revelation, right? But here's the point. 
once revelation hits, where are we going? You alone have the words of eternal life. Once revelation hits about healing, what else am I supposed to say? I believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Once revelation hits, I got seed in the ground. I cannot help but get a harvest. That's revelation. That's not mind over matter. That's a revelation. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, folks, again, just, just, just in this gap in between crucifixion and resurrection, don't hide, don't hang with the wrong folks, and don't go back to your old ways. But in this gap, remember what God said. Recall what God is saying. Repent. Change your mind and change your behavior accordingly. And rehearse till you get a revelation of the very thing you're after. Bless his name. Bless his name. The thing I'm crying out for, I'm not ashamed to admit it. The thing I'm crying out for is God in this season, do not let me miss you. In this next season, God, please do not let me miss you. Don't let me settle for good, but not God. Don't let me settle for be a bit better and not break through. God, don't, don't let me miss it. I, I don't have the time. I don't have the energy, Jesus. I don't want to miss it. I want to be on point. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care how I'm going to feel about it. God, where should I be? What should I be doing? How should I be doing that? That goes for me personally. It goes for my family. It goes for the ministry. It goes for the King's Cathedral. It goes for every element. I'm crying out for that. What? I need revelation. You follow me, right? I need revelation. Glory to God. What are you calling me to step into? I feel God pulling me in a certain area right now. God, what are you calling me to step into? I know God's calling me into deeper miracles, more profound, notable miracles. God, what's my access point into that deeper realm, God? What's the access point into that deeper realm, Lord? Right? But that requires and, and um, it requires me handling my gap, man. Got to handle the gap. Somebody type in, got to handle the gap. Got to handle the gap. God, I cannot afford, right, Jermaine? We cannot afford to miss you. You can't, folks. You hear me? Generations yet to be born, should Jesus tarry, are depending on you and I getting this thing right. we got to handle the gap. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you did, didn't do, who likes you, who doesn't like you, you're alive right now, God knows. This is it, y'all. This is, this is the real deal. Right here, right now, you have to decide how you're going to handle the gap. Got to handle the gap. Bless his name. Got to handle the gap. Got to handle the gap. Glory to God. Got to handle the gap. Glory to his name. Got to handle the gap. Praise his name. Praise his name. And you know, you know, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta handle, gotta handle the gap. But check this out: you gotta handle the gap. But if there's ever a time when you, you and I need to be a bit self-centered, it'd be now. What do I mean by that? If if I'm not handling the gap, and I'm waiting on somebody else, Regina, right, to handle the gap and to get themselves together, whatever the case is, you can miss it. You can miss it. This right here, this right here, you got to handle your gap. Got to handle the gap. You know what I mean? You got to handle the gap. I thank God that I got I got a wife that's that's ahead of me on this thing. You follow me? I thank God for that. But if she wasn't, I still got to handle my gap. Right? I got to handle my gap. I got to handle the gap whether church folk get with it, don't get with it. Handle the gap whether the Judas says do what they're gonna do. I gotta handle the gap whether the government does what the government's gonna do. Cause I listen, I gotta handle the gap. Bless his name. Bless his name. I hope this I really pray this was helpful, helpful to you. Now before you go, a couple things. 
couple things. Um, one, I want to receive, um, I want to eat the body and drink the blood with you today. Glory to God. This is one thing that's helping me rehearse and remember and recall and repent, right, is, is, is that. Secondly, give you an opportunity to give. But then thirdly, I want to talk to you just a brief, brief moment about um, the pandemic. All right, it's not, none of this is going to be long, but I just want to let you know where we're going. And I, want, I, would, that, I would to God, you would stay with me for another 10 minutes maybe. All right? The night when Jesus was betrayed, the Bible says he took bread and he broke it. So this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death until I come again. That's what he said. And, and in light of what we're talking about, remembering and recalling and rehearsing, this is the, it's more than a symbol, but this is the touch point for that. It is everything that God is saying and doing. He's did it. He did it and is saying it in Jesus' blood. The Bible says all the promises of God are yes and amen in him. But it takes revelation, amen? Otherwise, this is just a matzah cracker, unleavened bread, and this is fruit of the vine. And so, so when I'm taking this, I'm asking God for more revelation. I want you to do that too. Whether you receive it this morning with me, and Leilani, or another time, ask God for revelation. You want to get get beyond it being unleavened bread and and fruit of the vine and just a symbol. You want to get to a point that you realize that it by itself is a proclamation. If I didn't say anything, the very fact that I'm eating and drinking this proclaims that Jesus Christ died in my behalf. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful? So, Lord Jesus, thank you for your broken body, giving yourself as a sacrifice, as a lamb. Thank you for, for taking my sicknesses and carrying my pains. Hallelujah. Thank you for being the, the paying the price in your own body for my redemption. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give me revelation, O oh God. The bread. Healing, healing is happening in somebody's body right this very second. Right this very second, something is shrinking just this very second. And you will know it. You will know it. You will know it. Doctors will tell you it is shrinking. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. Your blood that washed away my sins and made me family. That caused me to be an heir. Thank you for your blood of the covenant. Glory to God. That your word cannot fail because it's a covenant word. Thank you, Lord, that. Thank you for that. That the blood is upon my doorposts, upon my windows in my house. Glory to his name. Thank you that the plague cannot come nigh and shall not come nigh me or anything attached to me. Bless his name. Thank you for the covering. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. You may drink the blood. Glory to God. It's shrinking. I'm telling you, for somebody's going down like a balloon right now. Bless his name. Glory to God. If you care to sow, again, we offer that as an opportunity in fulfillment of Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. If you look at that scriptures, you'll see from whence I'm coming. All right, that'll be important to it. Lest there be any carnality or criticism of this, 
I want you to look at those scriptures, please. Luke chapter 6, 38 and Galatians 6, chapter 6, verse 6 to 10. And um, if somebody knows my PayPal link and my Cash App link, if you can put those up, that'd be great if you know them. All right. But as we do that, I want to talk about very briefly um, COVID-19 and um, what I believe to be the church's response at this point in time personally and corporately. And I'm going to dare speak or try to speak to the larger church body and not just the King's Cathedral. All right. Number one, I do not believe that this is a, this is um, the judgment of God. I do not believe that. Um, I believe it is judging, but I do not believe this is the judgment of God. Because if God were doing that, he is sweeping, quote unquote, the righteous and the unrighteous away at the same time here. And this is not God's plan. That's not how God operates. It's not how God works. Are you hearing me? And so I believe that the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. However, in this process... We would be foolish not to ask God what's up, right? God, show me how, show us as the Lord's church, the body, what is our, our role. I believe, and those who understand um, covenant would understand more than I would, that given the fact that this pandemic is occurring around the Passover time, around resurrection time, around Good Friday time, if you will, around this season. I believe that there is a spiritual conflict going on where the enemy has come to say, I'm going to strike, I'm going to strike right now. But he was a fool to think that he could strike now in the midst of this. Um, at the same time, the church, the blood of the bride of Christ rises up. Are you following me? And so this is, the, this is the time when the Lord's church should rise up. So, so whether you think it's a judgment or not, I would banish that thought, but I would do this. I would accept the challenge and the provocation to say, as David said, I am not going to take this sitting down. I'm coming for you, giant. Amen? And this is the church's response. We should respond with that. We should respond with Jesus saves. saves. We should make sure people are ready for heaven. We should also bring deliverance to people. Are you, are you hearing me? And so every one of us should be taking up our spiritual life and our spiritual quote unquote game to an entirely new level. Entirely new level. If you've ever believed God before, this will be the time to actually make sure you are believing the right things. You're making sense? You should be doing that. Now, the great debate on whether or not people should be having group services and defying the laws, and um, quite honestly, I think, that's, I think that's a sophomoric argument. I don't think we should be um, even in the arena of arguing over that factor. This isn't just a, a, a violation of First Amendment rights here. This is a public health issue and concern. And unless you yourself, in my opinion, let me, I'm going to put it squarely on me. Until I get a revelation and evidence that I walk in such divine revelation and power that no one around me can, can inflict me, no one around me is going to get sick, I could not, in good conscience, call people together. Are you following me? And so I elected not to do that, right? Anymore, I believe that God, I don't believe anyone's ever going to steal from me or rob from me. My cars are covered in the blood of Jesus, right? But how many people have had a broken window before? How many people have had a radio stolen out of their car before? You following me? So, so you still lock your doors is my point. So in this season, we're just locking the doors. In this season, we're in a quarantine. Leviticus speaks of that as well as Exodus. In this season, we are doing better things until we get ourselves in a stronger position. That makes sense. Now, 
Can we go just a little bit deeper? All pressure reveals what's on the inside of anything. Pressure will reveal and uncover what's inside. It'll expose weaknesses again. So with this particular pandemic, what this does is um, it does reveal physical weaknesses and challenges, right? It's, it's been proven, at least statistically, that, that individuals that had issues going into this situation are now finding themselves at a higher risk. Their defenses are lower. Right. So, so we need to take wisdom from that and say, wait a minute, I've got to get myself together going forward. I can't play with my health because I, cause I, I'm, 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 one non, I'm one virus away from a problem. That makes sense? So, so um, um, what I recommend is that you take the precautions. I had to go out today, this morning. I put my mask on. Thank you, Donna Caldwell Jefferson. Um, you should put your link up if you want people to buy. She did turn her crew do custom masks and different things. Um, I got my gloves, got my mask, and I hit the store, in and out, boom. Had to make a run for my daughter, did that, back in the house, right? No harm, no foul. I don't feel violated, right? This is what we're doing right now. This is what we're doing right now. And if the church, including the King's Cathedral, if the King's Cathedral falls apart because we weren't together on Sunday, to hear worship, then we were never a church in the first place. If you leave Jesus because you can't get to church on Sunday, but yet you have access to every social media device known to mankind, and you and you leave the church, you were never in the Lord's church. You follow me? <clears throat> so that being said, including the financial element, if the church financially fails, because people are not getting together on Sunday, but they won't bring their tithes and their offerings and their, because it's a spiritual thing, not just a financial thing. If you won't do that, then, then, then you aren't really down anyway, right? And the church needs to fold up. If, if, if we can't withstand this time and we can't make it, then we need to close this joint up anyway, you know? So I'm not sweating any of it. Thank God the church is doing well in that regard. But let me go back. For people um, who are black and brown, as we say culturally these days, the COVID virus is affecting at a rate of two, 100 to 200% or two to three times as much as other groups for a lot of reasons. There's social inequities and inequalities within healthcare that predated the situation, but there's also an issue whereby we have, you know, we are, we have several of the um, pre-existing conditions that make this that much more dangerous for many of us. That makes sense, right? Why and how we got those things, trust me when I tell you, we're, we're working on, working on, how not to be in that condition going forward, but we're here. So if you flippantly reject taking care of yourself, that is absolutely irresponsible and insensitive to everybody else that's around here. Take care of yourself. Even if it was like you were going to, you know, you 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 got flu symptoms and you and you running out coughing on everybody. Forget COVID nineteen. I don't want you in my house sniffling. Not not right now. Let's not do that. Right. Let's not do that. So 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 in this environment, take care of yourself. For other people's sake. You got faith. The Bible says have faith for yourself. That's what the Bible speaks about. You have it. If you got to do it, then, but 
Throw a glove on, wrap a scarf around, turn it into a style. Do what you got to do. Turn it into a stylism. But let's be serious about this. Right? 40, 50, 60, 70% more deaths with black and brown people than other groups, primarily because of pre-existing situations. And I would even argue, and now in some cases, we're just, just ignoring it. Right? Just chill for a minute, y'all. Take this time. You're going to be very angry with yourself when you get back into the run of things. You're going to say, man, I wish I really used my time better. Slow your roll. Somebody type in slow your roll. Just slow it. Just slow your roll. Slow your roll. If your friends leave you because you can't hang out with them right now, they weren't your friends. Slow your roll. Read a book. Watch movies. More importantly, build your vision, your dreams, you know? Slow your roll. But take care of yourself so you can take care of other people. One of the greatest revelations for me, and I do call it a revelation, one of the greatest revelations for me during this time has been why a person should wear a mask when they're in the public. It was a great revelation for me. Because I'm saying to myself, now I know better. No little plastic mask ain't stopping. No virus from getting in my nose. Right? I'm thinking that. And it's all on the sides. But what it helped me understand was, I, if I were a carrier of it, I'm not, to my knowledge, nor will I be. But it helps me not spread it. That was such a revelation to me. So whether or not I feel I'm going to get it or not, let me just cover up. So I'm going, I'm just not going to spread it to anybody. I'm not going to compromise anybody, right? I'm going to make it difficult for that thing to attach itself to me. That makes sense. That makes sense. Right? With parents who are 80 and 83 years of age right now, you're not getting near them. You're not getting near them with masks on let alone without masks on. Why? Why Why set somebody up? You might carry it on your clothes and, and, and jam somebody up, don't know, right? So come on, y'all. Come on. Let's be serious about this. Serious about this. And if you are, if you are, if you are black and brown, as, as it said, if, listen, you need to be super serious about this. Not to mention the, the nursing homes and the prisons. We got some real issues, y'all, and we can't be fighting over some dumb stuff. Just get yourself together and just stay home. That's right, Mother Francine. Make sure you got everything you need. I know you got your daughter's a judge and other people got you covered, but don't have me have to come to Atlanta to help you, all right? So, <laughs> I've been known to do things like that, so but I know you're good. So um, I wanted to share that with you today. All right, and exhort you, encourage you. Um, you know, who I don't know. I don't know when the governor will release us back into our local settings. I, I, I just don't even know. And I'm in communication with government, and we, we they don't know. And if the if the Lord's church falls apart because of that, it wasn't founded on the rock in the first place. And we need just to put sackcloth and ashes on it and saying, well, we had a good run. Do you follow me? But I, I believe better for us. And I know that is, in fact, the case. Amen. And so, all right. So there you have it, folks. I'm done <laughs> this morning. Um, tomorrow morning, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. A um, couple of things are happening. Tomorrow morning, of course, we're having service similar to this. I think I'm going to change my, my setting um, and um, got a message on how to have a resurrection in your life. How to have a resurrection in your life. Um, it's a revelation I asked the Lord for and he has helped me understand it. So I want to share that tomorrow morning. But also there's some children's ministry that's going to happen online as well. I want to give a shout out to the children's ministry team, um, our our volunteer teams that are working around the clock um, and really helping, you know, and offering 
to come up with creative ideas, you know. Um, if you don't see something happening online, it's because someone hasn't stepped up to give us an idea about how to do it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Simple as that. And uh, I'm not a great creative like that. So between my wife and the team, they're coming up with these great ideas. Um, and specifically, Jezebel Mills um, with the children's ministry. So that's going to happen online too. So we'll keep pushing that. So if you have children, you can have them tune in. Um, I'm launching this very second, um, my latest podcast. And if you want to subscribe to it, I want you to, if someone could type in my podcast information, that would be great. Let's see if we can get that. Almost done, folks. Hang in there with me, please. Just hang in there with a brother. It's motivate me today dot podbean dot com. If you subscribe now, you're going to get the latest version, latest episode on predictions. It's called predictions. And I want you to have that. Um, and so, but you got to subscribe to get it. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. But there's opportunities if you want to become a patron for $5 a month or less, actually. You can um, help us produce this and become better at it. I'm new at this. And so, but it takes money to actually become better and get better equipment. So, and also with my links up there again, if you'd like to give and sell. All right. Love you all. Thanks for being on today. Um, do your part and watch God do his part. Amen. Do, we're going to do our part and we'll watch God do his part. Please subscribe to the broadcast. Thank you for sowing um, into our lives. We love you. Remember, Jesus is alive. Lord willing, we'll see you in the morning. Amen. Bye now, everybody. Blessings to you. Thank you. Blessings to you. Bless his name. Thank you. Blessing, Sandra. Good morning. Blessing to everybody. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. <laughs> Make sure, please, I encourage you to subscribe to the podcast. You can get that anytime you want. And um, thank you for sewing. And um, listen, those who are still watching on Facebook, I really want you to, if you can, to re-listen to this last broadcast. I believe it'll be helpful to how to handle the middle. All right. Bye now. Love you all. Thank you again.